open up a composition inside After Effects, go to New Composition, and we'll leave this at 640 by 360, uh, 24 frames a second, and I'm going at five seconds here. Click OK, and uh, let me make some room here on my tiny little screen. OK, um, we're going to go and create a new solid. Color doesn't matter. Um, and now we're going to go up here, select the mass tool, and we're going to make a circle. Okay, just center it a little bit. Okay, uh, so for this write on effect, um, it's done with a filter that you can find under effects. Go to generate and go to stroke. So we're going to put the stroke on there, and you'll see a white line now around your uh, shape. Um, but what we want is we don't want to see the shape, we just want to see the line. So in order to do that, we uh, go down here in this option for paint style and we go on transparent. And that way we just have our line now. So uh, animating this is uh, pretty easy. All we're going to do is animate the start point here. If I, here, I'll turn off my uh, mask visibility button here so uh, we can see the shape. So if I just uh, drag this right here, you'll notice uh, this is the effect that we're going for. Um, it looks like it's just drawing itself on. So we want it to start at 100% here. We'll set a keyframe and we'll go down to maybe four seconds and we'll set that to zero. So now if we hit render, uh, we're just gonna see, uh, there you go. It's magically writing on right now. And this is pretty much uh, the gist of this effect, uh, but we can do some other things to it, and I'll, I'll show you a lot more techniques, uh, a little more advanced stuff that you can do with it. Uh, one thing you can do when you're using this effect is um, you can add an easy ease keyframe to the, to the last keyframe here, or the beginning one, but we'll do it to the last one here. So hit F9 when you have that keyframe selected and it's going to make it ease in to the end a little bit more so it slows down as it gets to the end there we can make that even a little little smoother coming in so right click on the keyframe go to keyframe velocity put that to like 70 for the incoming now you'll really see it start to slow down there you go look at how nice and smooth that is on the approach there cool Okay, and now you can use this effect with multiple, I'm going to turn back on my mask visibility button. You can use this effect with multiple masks, which is uh, pretty cool, and this is where the cool stuff happens uh, with this effect. So I'm going to draw another mask here, and right now uh, you'll notice that the second mask doesn't have anything happening to it, and the reason is that this button right here, uh, this needs to be checked that says all masks. So we'll check that, and now um, both, uh, both of our masks are going to draw on here. And you'll see that they're doing one at a time. They're doing our second mask first, first and, then our, uh, and then our other circle is drawn on. Um, if you want to change the order in which it's happening, because right now our second one draws on and then the first one draws on, but if we wanted to switch that, just select your layer and this is controlled, the order in which they are, are they write on are controlled by the hierarchy of our masks here. So if I drag our second mask above our first mask and then hit the uh, preview button, you'll notice that it's reversed now. Our other one is coming on uh, before. So there you go. That's, um, that's a good thing to keep in mind when you're doing this is that the order of these masks are, is important if you're uh, stroking them on sequentially. Now, uh, we could have both of these right on at the same time, and to do that, we just uh, uncheck this Stroke Sequentially button there, and now uh, they're both going to be writing on, they're both going to start and finish at the exact same time, uh, which is pretty cool. I can add a, maybe another shape in there, maybe I'll just add a, a rectangle or something just to show you how this is working. So they're all, uh, they're all writing on at the same time. Uh, if I wanted to, to have the circles be starting at different points so they don't look like mere images of each other, I could just double click on the mask and I could just maybe rotate it a little bit so it looks a, so things are happening a little bit differently. Makes it more interesting looking. 
Okay, next I'm going to show you how to import masks from Illustrator. Uh, if you want to have more complicated masks, it's always better to do it inside of Illustrator than inside of After Effects. Um, Illustrator's just built better for that kind of thing. Um, so I have Illustrator open right now and I have this, uh, this globe image that has a lot of masks in it right now. And so uh, if I want to get these masks into After Effects, I don't even have to save out the file and bring it into After Effects. There's an easier way to do it. Just select your masks in Illustrator, hit Command C, and go back into, uh, here, let's make a new comp. Call this globe, same settings. New solid. Okay, so I, I, I copied this mask in Illustrator. I just hit Command C. And then in After Effects, after I've created a solid, all I do is hit Command uh, V, and there you go. Now we got our, our masks inside of After Effects. It looks like it's a little bit bigger than our layer. If I shrink this down, you'll, you'll notice that it's cutting it off. Uh, that's not too hard of a fix, uh, but it can get a little tricky if you have a lot of layers. So select your layer and hit M, and I'm just gonna grab the top one, yeah, look at this, we got, we got like 560 masks. Okay, so I and I select the bottom one, double click on all the masks, and now we'll just shrink it down a bit. There we go. Uh, okay, so we got our masks in there. Uh, I'm gonna select the stroke effect and I'm I'm just going to copy from this layer and paste it onto our other one so we don't have to keep redoing the same thing over and over again. Select that, hit paste, and now this is pasting in with our keyframes and everything. So uh, now if I do, uh, I'm going to make our brush size a little bit smaller. It's looking a little chunky. Put it down to 1.5 maybe. I'm going to turn off my mask visibility there. We'll do a RAM preview. and. Uh, now um, we had stroke sequentially turned off so all of these every single mask all 560 of them are going to be all starting and finishing at the same exact time we can see how this looks and maybe uh, maybe we'll try it uh, stroking sequentially after this there's a lot of max masks in here right now and uh, so it's going kind of slow. So to keep that in mind, the more complex your shape is, uh, it's going to take a lot longer to render. So you just get to watch those keyframes tick by. <laughs> okay, uh, let's just render it right there. Okay, well that well that looks kind of cool right there. Um, you could try doing this, uh, whatever y your mask is. You could try stroking it sequentially, and it'll give it a much different look to it. Um, let's go on to another technique. Uh, let's do a new composition. I'll call this face. And I've got this picture of this dude's face right here. And uh, you can see it right here. Um, so what I want to do is I want to be able to like trace the highlights to the face. And uh, this is an, another cool way to add um, a write-on effect to like a, to a photo like this. So I'm going to take this face image, I'm going to drag it into its own comp. And then I'm going to drag that comp into a new comp. And the reason is just because I want to have this layer right here pre-comped. And uh, I'll show you why in a second here. Uh, I'm going to, let's see, I'll duplicate uh, this face layer, hit Command D on it to make a new one. I'm going to add a levels adjustment um, to it. And basically, uh, this effect works the best uh, with high contrast images. Um, so I'm just going to be bumping up the contrast on it a little bit. There we go. That's uh, that looks a little bit better there. So I'm going to take this layer and I'm going to pre-compose this by hitting Command Shift C and move all attributes into new comp. And uh, the reason I pre-comp that is because you, you always want to make sure that your effects are um, going to be in a, a composition below the um, layer that you're working on when you add this effect. So if I select this layer and then I go up to Layer and I go to Auto Trace, this is the, um, 
is the effect uh, that we're going to be working with. And uh, you'll see what it's doing is it's um, it's set to luminance right now. It might be set to alpha for you, but uh, we want to be working from the luminance channel, uh, which just means the brightness of it. Um, and then we've also we've got some options in here. Uh, you can adjust things like the threshold, which uh, which will um, change how much of this image uh, is going to be uh, turned into a mask or a mask. Uh, so you can see uh, it's it's changing how much it's selecting based on uh, what I put the threshold to. And uh, if you increase the tolerance, it makes it a little. Um, oh, whoops! <laughs> Accidentally uh, clicked OK. Let's go back to auto trace there. Um, if you increase the tolerance, um, it changes uh, the way uh, the uh, pixels are selected there. I'll put that back to like four. And then this blur option right here is pretty cool too. Um, it, it smooths out. Uh, you can see when I turn it on and off. Uh, our mask right here is really uh, jagged along the edges of it. And uh, turning on the blur to it is just going to smooth things out of it. Maybe I'll put it up to 5. There we go. That looks pretty cool. Um, so I can hit Apply to New Layer. And we'll click OK. And now I've got. Uh, if I turn back on my mask visibility, I've got these masks created um, off of that photo there. And maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe it's kind of cool just just like it is. Uh, but if we wanted to use the write on effect to it, um, we can do that. Uh, I think if I hit Command, yeah. I just pasted uh, the same stroke layer that I had from before with the keyframes and everything. Uh, so if I check this out now. Uh, now we got like it, uh, it's drawn some lines onto our photo, which is pretty cool. And uh, so that's one more way to use the write on effect. Uh, one more option. Uh, I saved the, uh, this last technique. I'm going to make a new composition and I'll call it text. Um, this is probably going to be one of the most useful techniques out of all these for you. Um, and it's, it's uh, creating the write on effect on top of type. So I'll show you what I mean. I'll just uh, go ahead and write my name here. Um, let's get rid of this. Get out of there. OK, now that I got my type here, if I wanted to create masks out of this and do a write-on effect on the type, uh, it's pretty easy to do. Just select your type layer and go up to Layer and go to Create Masks from Text. We'll click OK. Uh, it it turns off your text layer and it, it makes a new uh, layer with all your masks on it and uh, I'm gonna hit command uh, command V to paste uh, my stroke layer in again and uh, now let's go ahead and take a look cool how how cool is that uh, so we got all of our masks and they are all coming on at the same time. I can try stroke sequentially and see how that looks. There you go. They're going on one at a time. And uh, if you didn't want them, like right now, it probably doesn't make sense to start at the last letter and go forward. So if I want to reverse that, rather than doing the start time, I'm going to delete that first keyframe there. Uh, I'm going to animate the end keyframe. So I'll set a keyframe for the end. And then I'll bring it to zero at the beginning. I'll hit uh, F9 on that last keyframe to ease it in. So there you go. Um, we reversed it there. So if you don't like how your masks are animating on, you can always try animating the end rather than the start here. OK, so let's add one uh, last little technique onto this right on effect to um, make it a little more interesting. Um, a lot of times, the uh, I, you don't want to have just a perfect looking stroke on your on your type or on whatever it is, just because it looks a little too neat. There's times when I want it to look a little more uh, rough, like a little more, I don't know, maybe like a pencil pencil writing or something like that. So in order to roughen up these edges, uh, there's a great <laughs> filter called Roughen Edges. 
Uh, so we'll add that. Uh, right now everything disappeared and that's because our the border is set a little too high. If I set it to maybe three, uh, maybe two. There you go, that, that looks pretty good. I'll bring down my edge sharpness. Um, so you can see already that that uh, it doesn't look so pristine anymore. Uh, makes it look a little more art organic, a little more natural. Uh, I could play with these settings in here and play, increase the complexity, maybe if I want it to be a little more rough looking. The other option that you have, uh, rather than doing the rough and edges, is um, uh, I'm going to use my texture from my Paint It Black texture pack, which you can download for free on my site. Um, so I got this texture here, and I'm going to drop this in. And it's black right now, that's why you can't see it. So we'll just add, um, we'll add a fill to it just so we can see it. <clears throat> we'll shrink this down. Uh, maybe, there we go, it's gonna cover the type. Okay, and uh, if we have our texture below our outlines there and we go to track mat and we go to alpha mat, then it's going to be, uh, the texture is going to be cut out from the outlines above it. So now we can see our texture coming through. And uh, this, w this one looks a little, it looks even more natural than the rough and edges because the texture behind it uh, it's going to be, you know, it's going to look different in different spots of the word. <clears throat> so that's a pretty cool option to make it look uh, a little more natural. Now we can combine these effects and we can uh, turn on our rough and edges along with our uh, texture below it. And then, uh, that's like super texture there. <laughs> um, Okay, so, so uh, that pretty much brings us to the end of this little uh, demo.